Good afternoon, family, and welcome to another edition of Dignity Speaks. Of course, I'm your host today, and like always, I got my main man, Johnny Brennan. My name is Elmo Golden, and today we have a, a heartfelt, exciting show for you guys today. Absolutely. So, like always, we have to wait till our pastor <laughs> open up the heavens for us. Amen. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, we just thank you for another exciting day, Lord God, another opportunity to speak to these viewers, Lord. And Lord, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would just bless this show, bless the work of our hands, and bless those who are watching and listening, Lord God. And we just thank you in all of these things we pray and ask of you, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Today's show, we're going to be talking about um, our feelings. Wow. Our feelings. Um, I guess my my perspective of how I feel concerning the the riots, concerning the the COVID nineteen, the stay at home order, um, the spikes that we're seeing now because we're out and about. It, th these things can they they can become quite stressful. Mm -hmm. And even some of the relationships we have with other people are, are they're under attack and they're, they're stressed. They're becoming stressful too. Um, I believe that if we don't sit down and evaluate what we're saying and what we're doing, we're definitely go, are going to plummet. It's Absolutely. going to get more, much more difficult than what we ever imagined. You know, how do you feel about that, Pastor? Uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, in any given day or time, depending upon what's going on in the world, we definitely want to always stay vigilant. The Bible says, be vigilant, be sober, be vigilant, your adversary. Mm -hmm. uh, the devil has roaring lines, uh, walketh about seeking whom mm -hmm. he may devour. And that's just staying mindful and cognizant of uh, your surroundings and the things that are going on. Um, I do believe, though, as well, that it's equally as important for us to continue to live life. Jesus said that I came to give you life yeah. and I came to give it to you mm -hmm. more abundantly. Um, and so, you know, there's still ministry work to be done. You know, yes, you know, we can take every precaution to be safe and we have to be mindful. I would say be mindful even of how much news and TV you're consuming. Right. If you continue to watch, you know, not to say that you want to stay, you know, with your head in the sand, but mm -hmm. if you continue to watch those negative images on TV, if you continue to, you know, uh, uh, allow your blood pressure to rise every time you see that there's a spike in coronavirus cases mm -hmm. and then you're okay when it's lowered, now you're allowing this media, this mass media to control you and to control your life. God, we know, is ultimately a control. And yeah. so... We've continued to minister, no, of course. even through it all. <laughs> uh, there's still homeless people that need help. Right. And so whether COVID or coronavirus is here or not, we still need to be able to meet those needs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's people who need mentoring. There's youth who need mentoring. Right. So regardless of what's going on uh, in the streets or things like that, we're still mm -hmm. accountable to God mm -hmm. for the gifts and the talents that he's given us to be right. a blessing into uh, those individuals' lives. And lastly, uh, one of the things that, that, I, that I think is uh, can intricately uh, intertwined in what we do is returning citizens. We did, some, we did some shows some months back, and we talked about how the unemployment rate before COVID, not now, but before COVID and the pandemic and everything, sat at 27%. Mm-hmm. So now, if the rest of America, if the rest of the country and our cities and our towns are going through an uh, economic so-called depression, mm -hmm. or however you want to term it, where does the lives of those men and women who are returning citizens, you know, uh, for me, if we were talking about feelings, I, I feel uh, mm -hmm. for individuals. And that's why it's our mission, our heart's work to continue to do what we're doing right now, mm -hmm. bring awareness, but also let people know that while things may have changed from a strategic standpoint, 
it by no means has stopped us from doing the work. Right. And the teaching continues also. And first, I like to applaud the parents that have the kids at home because we have to use creativity. And and I was asked the question, well, how do you entertain these kids while they, while they uh, are away from school or when they can't come outside? Imagination. That's what we've been using. That's been one of our tools. Mm-hmm. And we learned to, to construct and control these tools because of the kids. The kids can sit there and get two pieces of paper and, and start playing and then all of a sudden it's soldiers and wars and football and, and ships yep. sailing on oceans. Yep. Watch what your kids do. And see how imaginative they, they become. And we're asking that we become like little kids now and use our imagination and creativity so that mm-hmm. we can carry out these tasks that, that God has given us, these, this charge mm-hmm. we have to keep. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've been doing. I've been looking towards the kids for some answers. Because what they what they're doing is actually spectacular, you know, and the parents are are are, are giving them the opportunity to dream. They, you know, you look at everything that's surrounding us and how much has been taken away already before COVID nineteen, before any race riot, everything that's been taken away from us, and that's family time, mm-hmm. time that we we that quality time we get to spend with our families, our loved ones. We can do Absolutely. all that now. Um, the time that we can get to spend in the Word. You can do all that now. The time you can you can get to listen to your own thoughts. You have time for a lot of stuff now. So there's really no excuse. You have the time to dream and imagine also. You know, if you were created in the God in the image of God, imagination, image, the creation, you can you should be able to come up with some good ideas now to to um, carry out your mission statement if you're a minister or whatever functions that you have inside of your church or if you even if you are a person with a giving heart um, you should just be ready and to to find out ways even if you have to throw the food across the street to, just to practice what the um, the restrictions are with CDC mm-hmm. there are ways that that uh you still can minister and th- these are the best times for someone like us, like guys that um, that are getting out of prison, like people who have already been given, these are perfect times for us to see the need and fulfill that need. You know, I was writing a letter to some of the guys that are incarcerated, and one of the things that I said was that the world is pre- is preparing itself for you. The mm-hmm. world is preparing itself for you. So you have to learn how to prepare yourself for what's in the world. You have to guard yourself. You have to gird up. You have to come up with these 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 ideas, these imaginative ideas. You have to come out strong. You have to come out fighting. You have to be solid in your thinking. You have Absolutely. to understand that the word is your foundation and what God has for you that no man can take away from you. And so people are looking for you right now. They're looking for you. Are you prepared? Are you mm-hmm. are you Shower, you 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 showered with glory. Are you a person that's coming out and you have on the full arm of God? Are you a person that has correct thinking that that's right in your thinking, knowing what God will is for your life? Mm-hmm. Are you that person? If you are, then this is your time. This is the time for you to get on the battlefield and learn how to to not only cope but control what's going on. In, the, in your life and in your household. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, those are all things that I think are integral to success. One of the things that if I've learned anything, uh, and I think that a lot of people can attest to, there mm-hmm. are some great things. David said it best. He said, it is good that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. Mm-hmm. There are some things that we learn about ourselves mm-hmm that we learn about other people, that we learn about survival when we're put under pressure. It's something about being put under pressure. (laughs) It's something about being put under that fire. Mm -hmm. It's something about being put in an unpredictable circumstance Mm -hmm. that causes you to adjust. They call it adjusting on the fly. You know, we learn to improvise Mm -hmm. a lot lot behind bars, behind closed doors. We learn how to 
set out a plan, set out different things that we were going to do, even when resources and things uh, that were uh, uh, basically uh, uh, around us were limited. Right. And so we've known people and we ourselves are standing before you by the grace of God who will come out and saying, you can still excel. Mm -hmm. You can still do things. You can still, what he was talking about, you can still create, you can still cast vision, you can still do the things that God has placed on you or placed in you to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that during this time of planning, during this time of focus, during this time of reshifting, uh, I think that it's changed a lot of people mm -hmm. and their mindset. One of the things that I think is the greatest things that came out of this is that God is ultimately always in control. Yeah. You you know, man, not to cut you off, mm -hmm. but I'm noticing that a lot of people in the body of Christ believe that Trump is controlling. Hmm. I'm noticing that they believe that CNN and everybody else is controlling. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, they and it seems like, okay, it's more about what they're doing, what, what's going on everywhere else than what God has done and what he is continuing to do. Absolutely. Um, and I want you to continue to finish. I didn't mean that. Oh, no, was... no. You, you, you said it right mm -hmm. there because one of the things that we have to recognize or remember, rather, is ultimately regardless of what they're putting on TV in regards to the economy, regardless mm -hmm. of what they're putting on TV as far as numbers, whatever the mm -hmm. statistics are, how big is your God? Mm -hmm. My God caused the sun and the moon to shine. Mm -hmm. He caused the birds to wake up this morning and start singing and flying, and the mm -hmm. sea only goes so far and the rivers are stopped. So if we serve a God like that, then all of the things that we see here and, 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 and can listen to, whether it be via CNN, all these other different things, all those are kind of minute. Those are mm -hmm. things that we need to take into consideration when we're going through our day. But ultimately, mm -hmm. when we're talking about planning out our life, when we're talking about helping others, those right. are things that should not dictate mm -hmm. how we help others, how we get involved. And so I, I, I said that to, to say this. The reentry, the returning citizens, that hasn't gone away. Mm -hmm. Just because maybe it's gone away from maybe the forefront of maybe some news stations or some TVs, mm -hmm. uh, that problem hasn't gone away, mm -hmm. nor has the, the call for us to, 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 to do those things right. in regards to helping men and women. Uh, we were just, uh, just the other week, you know, you saw a show where we were talking to some young ladies who had come out and the misconception that women have it easier when they come out. And we know that right. that's certainly, uh, certainly uh, not the case. And so when I think about mm -hmm. continuing this work, mm -hmm. and I say continue, what I mean continue, I want to encourage someone today that has kind of put some things off to the side because they're waiting for something to happen. Mm -hmm. What if nothing ever changes? Right. What if they say, this is it. This is how things are going to be. We got to continue to move forward, mm -hmm. even with cones in the way. You know how you yeah. do when you got an obstacle course. You just work around the cones. Yeah. You work over the hurdles. You go over the bar. So that's what we're saying. Whatever those plans are, whatever those mm -hmm. things are, don't set them off to the side and let them mm -hmm. collect, collect dust. Continue to move, continue to navigate, continue to move forward because the world, the, 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 the world, your community, your society, they need you. Mm -hmm. They need you. And you know, we, we deal with all races, mm -hmm. but I'm starting to notice the way that we, we are treating each other. Mm. We're walking on eggshells. We're watching what we say now. It's the, the, the uh, Sitting at the table now becomes awkward and uncomfortable, you know. Mm. And even if we do have the discussion, mm. which we've had with some of our counterparts, um, you still leave away empty. Mm -hmm. And I know why we leave we leave the table empty because there was absolutely no satisfaction in the conversation anyway. Mm -hmm. You know how it what boils down at the end of the day, man, is how you treat me. Yes, you can't even show me Jesus. If you can't treat me right, mm -hmm. think about it. how are you going to do that. You know, you you disrespectful, or you calling me names, or you 
you know, you, you my well being is not at the forefront of your mind. How can you you come in and show yourself to be God like, Christian like? Mm-hmm. And so we have to make sure that these are these relationships that we've established with different cultures, different people over the years is not it's it's shaky. Yes. Because we mm-hmm. we we second guessing ourselves and like some of my friends are feeling guilty about what what's going on. Um they're passionate about uh, injustice, but then it makes them look at them, them themselves in an unrighteous way. Mm-hmm. And I hope that I can explain this to you because I had a, an encounter a couple of weeks ago to where this guy just simply adored. He looks at me as if um, I'm offended or he's offended. He's offended me because what's taking place. We know we know that there's racism. It's always been there. It's, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it hasn't been just blacks and whites. It's, it's been based on cultural differences and religious differences and everything else because we're ignorant still. Yes. We're still an ignorant bunch of human beings. It's not a race thing at, to that point. We're using race as a way to, to, to gain power over other people. You know, it's a lot to look at, and, and we don't want to take what this time that God has given us to 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 harp on anything concerning these matters. These matters are, are at the forefront of our mm-hmm. hearts and minds, and they've always <clears throat> been there. And we know that the only solution is in Christ Jesus. And these are the things that we need to start looking Absolutely. at. And I want you to check the relationships you have with your friends because once you sit at the table, no one should feel uncomfortable because we should know where we sit at and our foundation is love. Amen. You know, Amen. Hey, here's another thing I want you guys to look at too. Um, during this time, let's look at what you're giving God. Mm-hmm. What, look at what you're offering up. What type of of, of, of aroma are you you giving up for mm-hmm. God? Mm-hmm. You know we you and then I'm ministering to myself right now. I'm talking about me and what I like to see in me in my life is that I I execute what God is always telling me to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I noticed that I I. Get, I'm getting caught up in the circumstances and the circle of people that are complaining all the time about mm-hmm. they don't have enough toilet paper. <laughs> it's getting crazy. Yes. And so, you know, these little small things that are always coming up, oh, I'm, and, I'm, and mm-hmm. I'm sitting there like, okay, last week you was covered in the blood. <laughs> what exactly. you covered in now? Exactly. And so we starting to look mm-hmm. at. I'm starting to look at my sisters and brothers who I I I, I love dearly, and I can't hug them and touch them, mm-hmm. and, and 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 comfort them in the way that I in the manner that I'm used to, and I and I realize that what they need is more counseling and prayer and the word of God involved in their life. Absolutely. And that's something I haven't been doing because I should have been calling. Every day, I should be checking on my brothers and sisters every day. I should be. Concerned about the kids that God has entrusted us with and the men and women that are, are being released from these institutions every day and talking to them. When you look at the prisons in Florida, you'll notice that you have about, at, at, at the very least, five to 600 people that are in quarantine up all the way up to 1,000 or maybe 1,500 people in quarantine mm-hmm. inside those institutions. Mm-hmm. Three weeks ago, a friend of mine died in the institution. And so, the, we, we, are we contacting them? Are we comforting them? Them? They can't get visits. They can't go to the store that's inside the institution. They can't have. Um, they have. They limited telephone calls now. Everything. Everything about what they used to do has been taken away from them. They can't even go out and enjoy the sun for for a few hours. <laughs> They're constantly locked down. Mm. Constantly going through quarantine. Mm. And. I just want to encourage you. You find somebody that you can write, man. And just get drop a little letter, postcard, or something. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's doing this, 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 uh, this, this, um, show knows someone that's incarcerated. Yep. So why not comfort them also? Or have you forgotten? And I want to say this, you know, just to open up another door about what's going on, um, with with the the ministry. Um, I had a men's ministry in Gainesville Sunday, and I one I didn't have it. I was invited to it, 
and it was one of the blessed times that I've ever seen. We had a young man that, that was there, 17 years old, and the pastor asked him, he said, what can we do to bridge the gap between the youth and, and the guys that are older? And the young man said, it's not really your stories. It's the way you love us. <laughs> not really what you say is what you show me, is what this young man said. <laughs> Don't tell me you love me. Show me you love me. And, the, and I'm sitting there looking at, you know, out of the mouth of babes. I'm sitting there looking at this young man, and, and you know, and this young man is also raising uh, his two siblings. He's 17 years old. He's raising two, he's helping his mother raise two kids, and he has uh, straight A's also. Awesome. Straight A's. So mm. immediately we took up a collection for this young man and began to, here, here. here. <laughs> You know, this is be, this is something that you won't have to worry about. Here go a few dollars, man, and, and those few dollars was actually a, a, a nice little piece of change for this young man, <laughs> because we're man. so constantly trying to beat our kids and and, and discredit them. Here's mm -hmm. an opportunity where we can reward them. I know, you know the my, the pastor he he taking his son to the bank today. Now I'm hoping I can get a little bit of that money, you know. <laughs> you know definitely, definitely. so that's what we want to do we want to encourage our kids to do something something positive um, we, something good we we actually getting the pastor's son and one of our under, other young men to to start their own business to yes. go into business, business yes yes and, and it's not about whether they succeed or fail it's that they try yes that that's is what we're doing huge huge set up a lot and, and, and you've hit on so many great uh, points. One of the things that, that is very, very heightened right now in our nation, uh, and that's that issue of, of, of race. And, uh, you know, it, this goes back to the biblical times, mm -hmm. whether you were the Jews and the Samaritans, yeah. the Hebrews and the Egyptians. I mean, you go back and it goes back beyond just us here today. Right. But one of the things we have to recognize uh, is that whenever someone is getting you to try to pick a side, because that's yeah. what it's really all about. Well, yeah. pick a side. Yeah. This issue happened. This was perpetrated. This was permitted. Now you pick a side as to which one you support, which one you, you're against, and everything like that. One of the things we have to recognize, and I know that it's very difficult in times to do this, but it's something that has helped me throughout the years, and it's a scripture in the Bible that says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -hmm but against principality, spiritual wickedness in high places, against, you know, darkness and things of that nature, go on and so on and so forth. Basically, the battle is not spiritual. Mm -hmm. And so everyone's influenced by one or two okay. things. They're either influenced by the spirit of God or they're influenced by the spirit of darkness. Right. And so there's no in-between. There's no individual agents. There's no free, you know, there's one or two things. Either God is inspiring you, influencing you to do something, or the, or the devil. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you know, that's just one or two things that are going on. Now, there are some things that are systematically going on that we need to look at and address. Uh, are there bad police officers? Absolutely. Are there good police officers? Absolutely. Uh, does every instance, you know, a, a person, you know, uh, deadly force is used? Is it that? No, you know, it's, it's not right. Uh, are there some instances where, you know, someone may have been afraid or whatnot? I do believe that there's some, because people are human. Mm -hmm. You know, you scare the wrong person, you know, at the wrong time. And you might, depending upon the level of training that they've got or their experiences, they're going to respond differently. That's why coming together as a family, right. uh, mm -hmm. a family, meaning the community needs to get back to, there was a time mm -hmm. when I grew up and even before I grew up, I know that my, my mother's generation where the community was a community. You knew that mm -hmm. cop that was walking the street. You knew when the mailman was coming. You three, four, or five different neighbors knew who your children were and would watch out for you and mm -hmm. would see if a stranger was trying to break it. All of that stuff was all about community. And so while those things have always uh, persisted, there is, there's always been racism, there's always been all of these different things. When we get back to the foundation of who we are, mm -hmm. the word of God is our foundation. And so when I say pick a side, whose side? I'm on the Lord's side. <laughs> so whatever the Lord would have me do in this situation, mm -hmm. that's how I'm going to respond yeah. to it. The Lord would have me to love at all times. Mm -hmm. the, the Bible even tells something, a hard pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Love your enemies. Yeah. 
Yes, the Bible does say that. He says mm-hmm. love the dynamic, but he even said love your enemies. Mm-hmm. And so what does it mean to love your enemies? That doesn't mean that you condone wrongdoing. Yes, there's justice. God is a God of justice and everything like that. God is a God of, of, of punishment and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, mm-hmm. God doesn't desire for us to have hate or whole hostility mm-hmm. for anyone. Mm-hmm regardless of what is Jesus was the one who was on the cross when they were they were nailing him to the cross and said father forgive them for they know not what they do and and it's not that people don't know what they're doing but if people really knew that they were sinning against the very God that gave them breath that loved them that could snap his fingers and they'd be gone if they knew that they were sinning when they were going against their brother when they were doing something against another person a human being they would stop, but a lot of people don't have that revelation. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't mm-hmm. have that revelation. So in closing, I mean, mm-hmm. you want to wrap up with any? Yeah, thing? yeah, I got something uh, that I, I would love to hear from from you guys. Love for you guys to look at the numbers on the screen. Contact us, write us, um, invite us. We thank you for inviting us into your home. First of all, um, yes, you, yes. You know, another thing you 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 talked so we talked about was. Uh, you know, doing things that we don't like, mm-hmm. you know, blessing others, you, you know, that the Bible says that despitefully use you. And I, you know, it, it, it when I heard that, I said, no, this, I need to close this book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bless those that persecute you. Mm-hmm. And how do you do that? How do you bless somebody that uses you? How do you bless somebody that persecutes you? You think about who you're serving. Because right up under that, he said, because they did it to me. Mm-hmm. They're going to do it to me. <clears throat> yes. You also yes. be prepared. When we started the show, I asked you, the world is preparing itself for you. Are you prepared, you prepared to be in the world? And we know we're not a part of the world, but we're here. Yes. And so we have to bring solutions to these challenges that we're facing. And I want I want to tell you this too. We we in all sincerity, we're praying for you guys every night. We're praying for your family, your children. Uh, we ask that you do the same for us also. We know that this is this can be a difficult time for some, but then there are others that this could be a blessed time. So we mm-hmm. want to know what candles are you burning? What candles are you burning? Is it a candle that that? I mean, as soon as you light it, the light goes right back out. It's the light that you that will hold off until morning. God is good and He's with us, and this is a time for for the men and women of God, the children of God, to be a candle that lasts a long time. Absolutely, He's mm-hmm. called us to be lights in the world. Light is at its best mm-hmm. when it's against the most darkness, and so while there's darkness going on with the the different riots and the sicknesses and everything. Now it's time to shine. It's mm-hmm. time for us to shine. Mm-hmm. It's time for us to shine. We want to hear testimonies. We want to hear stories. Mm-hmm. You see the numbers at the bottom of the screen. We want to hear and see mm-hmm. what God is doing in your life, in your part of the world, in your city, in your town, in your community. Mm-hmm. Thank you so, so much. Visit our website and have a blessed day. We thank you for all that you're doing. All right.